New analysis of ancient human protein could unlock the secrets of evolution. Bill, this article by Robin McKee, science editor for The Guardian, begins by saying, Tiny traces of protein lingering in the bones and teeth of ancient humans could soon transform scientists' efforts to unravel the secrets of the evolution of our species. End of quote there. I guess one thing it reveals is that ancient people didn't floss, Bill. (laughs) Uh, Actually, you discuss proteomics in the quest of the historical atom. So you're familiar with this research. Yes. In the quest of the historical atom, uh, I looked at the new science of protein proteomics and its application to fossilized human beings. And what these protein analyses, particularly of the teeth enamel on these uh, skeletal remains, can tell us about the uh, relationships of these uh, prehistoric humans. The article says, researchers believe a technique known as proteomics, newly applied in the field of human fossils, could allow them to identify the proteins from which our predecessors' bodies were constructed and bring new insights into the past two million years of humanity's history. Analysis of these microscopic remnants could then help to solve major evolutionary mysteries, such as the identity of the common ancestors of Homo sapiens and the Neanderthals. Uh, What are your thoughts on common ancestry these days, Bill? The phrase common ancestry is ambiguous, Kevin. It depends on what biological category you're applying it to. For example, if we want to talk about uh, the common ancestry of human beings, we would be looking at the common ancestry of Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo sapiens. This is not committed to there being a common ancestor of chimpanzees and human beings, for example, or of chimpanzees, gorillas, and human beings. Um, So what we're interested in here is simply the relationships among these fossil remains of people who have been classified uh, as belonging to the species Homo. Yeah, it kind of uses a catch-all phrase. Bill, when there's there's more to it, common ancestry is uh, usually thrown out there on the internet as as meaning one thing, and you know uh, that we all came from an amoeba or whatever. There there are you're saying that there are uh, nuances to that phrase. Yes, that's right. I think when we want to talk about the descent of all life from a common ancestor, we should use the way the phrase universal common ancestry. Uh, But when we're talking about limited common ancestry, for example, the common ancestry of all dogs, all dogs belong to the same species. They all have the same ancestor. Uh, Then common ancestry is unobjectionable uh, and uncontroversial, I think, in, in many cases. So the way I applied it in my study in quest of the historical atom was to try to find the common ancestor that gave rise to Neanderthals and Denisovans in Europe and Asia and to Homo sapiens uh, in Africa. Next, the article says, the ramifications of the technology would mirror the impact of the recently developed technology of ancient DNA analysis, which, Mm. over the past 20 years, has helped uncover dramatic secrets about humanity's past. These include the discovery that many modern humans possess Neanderthal genes and that the two species must have interbred at some point over the last 100,000 years. Topic is discussed in your book, Bill. Yeah, that's right, Kevin. Um, A remarkable fact is that all of us, you and I, carry Neanderthal genes in our genetic um, library in our genome. In fact, since writing the book, I have read that a tribe was identified in the Philippines by anthropologists who have as much as 5% of their genome is Denisovan, Denisovan DNA. So it's remarkable the interbreeding that went on among these human uh, beings uh, and has filtered down 
to us as their descendants today. And the fact that they could all interbreed has suggested to uh, many uh, biologists that in fact these are not distinct species. Uh, very often a species is described as an interbreeding population that if two populations cannot interbreed then they belong to distinct species. If you follow that biological species concept, uh, it would follow that really Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo sapiens are not distinct species, but they're all just members of the same human species. Here's what the article says about Denisovans, uh, Bill. Uh, part of the research will involve using a handheld scanner that can be passed over a fossil in order to reveal how much protein it contains. The development of proteomics follows scientists' success in analyzing DNA extracted from ancient human fossils. By studying scraps of genetic material from fossils, science, scientists have discovered that men and women of non-African origin carry some Neanderthal genes. They also have revealed the existence of a completely new species of early humans known as Denisovans from genetic material found in tooth and bone fragments in a Siberian cave. All of this we've become familiar with in your book, Bill. Yeah, that's right, Kevin. And uh, another thing that I document in the book that is remarkable is that it's not simply non-Africans who carry these Neanderthal genes, but rather it has been documented that the, the Neanderthal genes are found in people living today of African descent. So this interbreeding that went on even carried right down into uh, Africa, and today uh, African tribes will carry uh, these um, genetic descendants from uh, the Neanderthal genome, just like you and I do. The article says, quote, but the analysis of ancient DNA has limitations. DNA is fragile and de decays fairly quickly especially in warm conditions, said Pontus Skoglin of the Francis Crick Institute. So it is mainly useful for studying fossils that are less than 100,000 years old mm -hmm. and found in moderately cool or cold places. Our bodies are made of proteins whose manufacture is controlled by our DNA, and so by unraveling their structure, insights can be gained into the makeup of ancient individuals. Crucially, proteins survive longer in warm conditions. The, this latter advantage offers hopes of gaining new insights into several baffling new discovered species. These include Homo naledi. Now, am I saying that right, Bill? Yes, yes. Uh, a 300,000-year-old hominin that was found in South Africa in 2013. Specimens appear to be primitive, although other evidence suggests they also have buried their dead. In addition, the orange the origins of Homo, and how do you say that? Because they're- Floresiensis. Uh, they're from Flores. Yeah, the <laughs> island of Flores. From the island of Flores yeah. in Indonesia. They're a small, archaic species of humans. They're nicknamed the Hobbit folk. Uh, you know anything about these little guys, Bill? Yeah, they, uh, I think in the case of both Homo naledi and Homo floresiensis, that we are dealing with uh, non-human hominins. Uh, although they are classed as Homo, uh, they have uh, brains that are scarcely any larger than the Australopithecines, which were just bipedal apes. They have uh, smaller brains than virtually any other uh homo species that's been identified. So as I explain in the book, one mustn't think that just because a primitive hominin is identified as being part of the genus homo, that that is a genuine homo, uh, human being. I, I think that in uh, these two cases, that we're dealing simply with advanced primates that were, uh, I think, clearly subhuman. The claim that Homo naledi buried its dead, I think, is fanciful. What they discovered is that in a cave, they dumped the carcasses of the dead down a crevasse. 
So that deep, deep down in the interior of the cave, all of these carcasses had collected. Well, that's not proper burial of the dead, such <laughs> as Neanderthals engaged in, where the dead would be interred with certain artifacts, um, perhaps it belonged to them or that uh, somehow were associated with them. I, I think these uh, hominin species were just in engaged in house cleaning, mm -hmm. so to speak. You don't want a stinking carcass lying around the cave, so they dump it down the crevasse. Wow. You know, Bill, I went online to learn how to pronounce all these species, but it's done me no good. When I, when <laughs> I start the podcast, my adrenaline gant, my adrenal gland kicks in, and I forget how to pronounce it. But at, at any rate, I did try. The article concludes... Proteomics has already produced early promising results. Studies by Frido Welker of the University of Copenhagen have shown that collagen proteins found in a piece of hominin jawbone high on the Tibetan pl plateau in China matches those of Denisovans. This is the first hint at what a Denisovan might have looked like and suggests that proteomics has a, a lot to offer our understanding of human evolution. Welker told this to the observer last week it's certainly encouraging end of quote bill tie all this in to your inquest of the historical atom uh, what do you hope that proteomics will continue to show i am waiting for proteomic analysis to be carried out on the remains of homo heidelbergensis uh, that were left at places like boxgrove uh, england the proteomic analysis of remains from certain uh, hominin species in Spain showed that Homo antecessor was not, in fact, an ancestor of Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo sapiens. Instead, Welker says it was a sister species, a kind of uh, branch off of the line of uh, development. And my curiosity is what these analyses would reveal with regard to Homo heidelbergensis, which I have tentatively identified as being the species to which Adam and Eve belonged. I wrote to Velker about this, uh, and in our correspondence, he said this just hasn't been done yet. No one has yet tested uh, any of the remains from Homo heidelbergensis to reveal its relationship to uh, Neanderthals, Denise Vance, and Homo sapiens. But that will be something uh, that will be extremely interesting when it's eventually carried out. 